One of the things uh, Jesus or the Christian church is trying to cultivate in us is, is help us to become connoisseurs of life. What is life and what's not life? What's life and what's death? <laughs> you know? And we don't often know, right? Things that look like life, we know are actually death. <laughs> you know? And things um, that look like death can be life. Disconnecting from media and all that stuff might feel like a kind of death, but we know cultivate, cultivates life. So we have to know what's life-giving. And as parents, or as teachers, or as guides, we, we have to know what that is so that I can advocate for that among young people. Because young people are coming into adulthood, and their, their primary question, maybe even before the longings for God, but the primary question young people are asking is, do you know how to stay alive? How do you stay alive in this culture? And they sometimes look at parents and adults and they realize, okay, adults, these adults don't really have friendships anymore. These adults are not in touch with their passions anymore. These adults are stressed and harried. <laughs> I don't want that. So where's life? You know? And then they decide, so I, you know, the only way I can understand to have life is I'm going to start a band or I'm going to be an actor or, you know, these kind of where they see people connected to passions or that kind of thing. And the culture tells them, right, and this is death, the culture tells them, here's how you stay alive, here's how you find your self-worth. You need to focus on achievement, what you accomplish, that building that resume, build, you know, affluence. You can get money and accumulate things, that'll make your life good, you know, and appearance, what you look like. If you can look beautiful and handsome, if you can have money and wealth, if you can achieve a lot of things, then you will feel life, right? And of course, <laughs> you know, I don't know how many people, they tell us this story, right? Famous actors, famous celebrities will say, I felt empty, depressed, I won the Academy Award, I felt like a failure, you know, that's not life. So we have to know what life is so that I can say to my daughter, and I can engage the fight. Uh, you know, at 8 o'clock, we're turning all these devices off and we're not going to have a phone in the bedroom. And when she wants to argue, you know, argue or say, why do you do that? And eventually, she's in charge of it herself, right? But is because it's like, because, you know, rest is important, because you need that disconnection. And, you know, and every young person knows these things are bad for them. I've sat with many teenagers and said, if we could... Um, Get, get these things out of your life. You know, would you want us to do it? If, the, if the America decided we're outlawing phones, they'd say, that would be such a relief. But, but they say, everybody has to get rid of them. <laughs> you know, not just me and my friends are all connected. But yes, I would love to not have this thing control my life anymore. They all know, know that, just as we do. But I, and so I have to engage in that fight of not only detachment and helping them separate from those things because I know that it's, it's hurtful, but I also have to show them other ways to interact. And that's kind of a battle, right? So when I'm leading a retreat with young people, or sometimes it's like we're putting these devices aside. You know, I just did a thing at a, at a, at a high school. It's kind of a, 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 it's a second chance high school. It's kids who dropped out, and I was with about 100 kids there. And, you know, they all walk in, and they put their phones in these kind of sealed bags when they come up, and they all hate doing it. But, you know, as soon as we get in there, then I ask them, like, what's it like not have your phone? It's like, oh, I hate it because I can't find it. But then it's like, but, and then they saw the other side of it. It's nice to connect. I like to joke around. We don't talk to each other when we have our phones. So the school keeps fighting for that. And I have to keep fighting for spaces. And I have to be able to explain to my young person or my, the, the teenagers why I'm doing this. And when I see them more fully alive, like, look how you guys are joking in the van here. Like, we have no phones on the drive to the beach. And I notice you guys are talking to each other and all that stuff, but when everybody has their phones, nobody talks to each other. And so I, that's really important that we get to know each other and there's a lot more fun this way. And, you know, I keep arguing for that. So you're choosing your battles, but I'm always trying to advocate for life. Well, let, let me just do... And it's hard, you know, it's not that this isn't... It's not easy, 